Hello colleagues, let's discuss how to build submaps. Uh, first about their topic. It's uh, pretty deep and pretty broad. As you see, there are quite many items. Uh, we will start with already available materials because we addressed this topic already. So check those materials before you go deep into this presentation and to, into this video. Uh, why submaps are needed at all? Let's touch this terminology. Many new words like non-diverse architecture, submaps, server zones, let's discuss them. Some basic starting hints. Uh, before going to submaps, how to place the beacons, how to place the beacons properly. Uh, we have three architectures, non-inverse architecture, inverse architecture, and multi-frequency non-inverse architecture. What are the differences and why we focus in this presentation on inverse architecture? Uh, basic uh, non-inverse architecture submaps and maps. Uh, redundancy. What is it for what? Uh, inverse architecture. Inverse architecture is the most complex topic, so this is why there are so many slides and there are so many ways uh, to build it. And there are so many ways to make mistakes. So this is why we suggest that you start with non-inverse architecture and only after mastering it, you go to inverse architecture. And then some special cases, of course, uh, it's a subject for, let's say, deeper discussions uh, in the uh, next presentations. And of course, the summary just to conclude. Why the submaps are needed? Uh, there are many ways, but probably the three most important are the following. For example, you want to uh, cover a huge warehouse, like, like this one. And uh, the largest submap you can build, 2D, for example, submap, uh, would require that uh, from the mobile beacon to the station beacons, not more than 30 meters. But if you have the warehouse, which is, I don't know, 200 by 200 meters, what to do? Clearly, you can cover this, no problem, but you need to build submaps. You cannot have a single map consisting of only two beacons, for example, at the corners and uh, cover. No, the maximum size of the submap is, uh, let's say, not the maximum size of the submap, but the maximum distance from the mobile beacon to station beacons serving in the submap is 30 meters. So that's the first one, range. Then non-line of sight. For example, even in this, uh, you have shelves. Shelves, clearly non-line of sight. So it means that you need to cover between the shelves, so ales, separate submaps. Walls, rooms, floors. So there are many ways when you have a static uh, obstruction. And that creates non-line of sight. And non-line of sight is the key element that is driving everything where to, pull, to put the beacons and how many station beacons you need. Uh, but then you have non-line of sight mobile one. Uh, for example, some obstacles are moving or people are moving or there is a chance that your mobile uh, beacon on the robot, for example, will be obstructed by something else. That's okay. There are some solutions and we will discuss those solutions. So once again, three major ones. Range, abstraction for, from static object and abstraction from uh, mobile objects. Um, we have already plenty of materials, so some videos, how to build those submaps, check them, you know, pause this video, jump to those simpler videos and have a glimpse of what we will be discussing. So check it. Operating manual, again, browse through the operating manual before you go deeper uh, in this presentation. It will help with uh, some understanding some terminology. So this is the extract, for example. It's not very deeply discussed um, in the operating manual, but it helps to start. So the placement manual, also a very nice source because it addresses several ways and several key topics like submap, server zone, universe architecture. It's much deeper in this presentation, but check it first there. Then step by step, a very fresh video, uh, which is basically saying one simple thing. Don't jump immediately to the complex maps before you build a less complex one. And the least complex one is non-inverse architecture in 2G with just two station beacons. Build it and then uh, go to uh, more complex uh, uh, maps and submaps step by step. Uh, then terminology. So what is the map? Map is a uh, set of submaps. 
map may consist of only a single submap. For example, if you get a starter set from us and you want to deploy our lovely 2D uh, non inverse architecture, you place two, two station beacons and your map will consist only of two station beacons, one mobile beacon and one modem. So it will be one submap and one map at the same time. That's it. So map can be very, very simple. But uh, those uh, trivial cases, you don't need such a detailed video. So uh, operating manual is uh, good enough and placement manual is good enough. This video is about more complex areas. When you need multiple submaps, when you need uh, a complex inverse architecture submaps, etc. What is supermap? Now, supermap is a future item. We don't have it yet, but some customers are already saying, oh, we need more than 250 beacons. We need more than uh, 250 submaps. So yes, it will be covered in the supermap, but not there yet. So what is submap? Submap is a combination of uh, two or more uh, station beacons. And uh, oh, anyway, um, it will be discussed in much deeper details. So submap is a combination of beacons. A smaller map that will be a part of the larger map as we just discussed. In each submap, there is a table of distance. There will be also a separate um, slide about this. So, um, is a part, so table of distance is a part of the submap where the distances between each of the beacons inside the submap are listed, either self measured or manually entered by you. Service zone is also an element of the submap, which is basically saying, okay, you submap will serve in this area. Because there's always an area where these uh, beacons in the submap are trying to serve, but you manually define it. So it's very, very useful and very helpful when you build large maps consisting of multiple submaps. When you have only a uh, single submap per map, it's a recommendation, but not a must. Handover zone, it's very simple. You have two overlapping submaps, and the overlapping area between these submaps is a handover zone. When the mobile beacon is moving from uh, service uh, zone of one beacon and then moving to this, during this time it, it, it is served by two beacons and then uh, it's served by the second uh, submap. So it's a typical handover like in cellular networks. Then uh, inverse architecture versus non-inverse architecture versus multi-frequency inverse architecture. There are definitions, there could be many, but a uh, basic distinguishing factor is who is emitting ultrasound. We are talking about ultrasound all the time. In terms of radio, they talk all the time. And remember that mobile beacons and station beacons don't talk to each other over radio. They talk to the modem. The modem is like center controller, spider controlling everyone. So they all talk to the modem. So what once again, uh, building uh, submaps and building complex maps, uh, it's not about the radio, mostly not about the radio. It is mostly about uh, ultrasound frequencies. So when I'm referring to frequencies, uh, unless specifically uh, addressed, it's ultrasound frequencies, not radio frequencies. Um, so in inverse ar architecture, station beacons are pop, 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 emitting ultrasound. In non-inverse architecture, mobile beacons are pop, pop, emitting ultrasound and station beacons are listening. And in multi-frequency uh, non-inverse architecture, mobile beacons are emitting ultrasound, but emitting ultrasound at the same time and on different frequencies. So we have eight different frequencies today available, and you can use eight, up to eight ultrasound frequencies in inverse architecture and up to eight ultrasound frequencies in uh, uh, multi-frequency non-inverse architecture. For uh, regular non-inverse architecture, it doesn't matter because your station beacons can be in any frequency because they are receiving. And for receiving, it doesn't matter because the super beacons can receive any and all frequency at the same time, but transmit only one frequency, which is native frequency for the beacon. Okay, ultrasound frequencies we already touched. So there are eight frequencies today. That's great because only one or two years ago we had five. Uh, which was fine for relatively smaller uh, maps, but for large maps, as many frequencies you have, the more freedom you do. So this is why uh, when you, you are acquiring and you are not sure, uh, get as many frequencies as you wish, because it will bring you the most flexibility for your maps. 
Okay, so back to uh, deeper uh, definitions and explanations. What is the map? Map is a, a combination of submaps. For example, this is a map consisting of two submaps, one submap and another submap. Each submap consists of two beacons, beacon 10 and beacon 11. Beacon 11 and beacon 12 is the second submap. Notice that beacon 11 belongs to both submaps, submap 1 and submap 2. Uh, today we support up to 150 submaps, and if each of the submaps can be up to roughly 1000 square meters, so theoretically, if you have a huge, huge, huge open hangar, it could be up to 250 uh, square meters, so huge one. Um, in practice, uh, the limitations are typically uh, non-line-of-sight limitations, like walls, uh, shelves, some other things. So uh, in reality, you can use those 250 uh, uh, submaps in much, much smaller area, or there could be some other limitations. Uh, today, we support up to 250 beacons in a map. Why? No, well, because each map is controlled only by one modem. Remember, one map, one modem. And uh, when map is ready, in order not to move anything, in order not to... Uh, because usually you spend quite significant time trying to build the map, freeze it. So freezing map means that nothing will be changed in terms of mobile uh, in terms of station beacons none of their service zones uh, position of the station beacons nothing changed and you can freeze and save the map it's very very helpful because it uh, it will prevent accidental loss of of this map because it's a substantial amount of time you will build those maps the future item is a super uh, map as mentioned, some customers are coming to us and say, wow, we love it. Can you cover even larger than 250? Yes, we can. There is no uh, dramatic change between map and super map. Simply super map is a combination of maps, the same way as a map is a combination of sub maps. So if each of the maps uh, contain 250 beacons, by combining those maps into the super map, you can cover virtually unlimited space. Absolutely the same as solar networks. So if you're familiar with solar networks, think about um, our submaps as cells, maps as a cluster of cells, and uh, super map as a super, uh, super cluster of those cells. And so in this case, you can cover you know, the whole world. It doesn't matter. So um, uh, as I mentioned, super map is a future item. As soon as you need it, we will be ready. But so far, all our customers are fitting into 150 beacons and 250 submaps because it's still large enough areas. Uh, if you words about the super map, super map will be controlled by super super beacon. So super super beacon is basically a software that is collecting the data from each of the maps. Each of the maps uh, is controlled by super modem because it's large one and super modem is streaming data to the super map and super super modem and super modem shows you as an end user the whole super map as just a map so if you don't know that it consists of other maps you probably uh, wouldn't pay even attention um, because for you it would look like a, just a huge map of thousands of thousands of beacons and thousands of thousands of sub maps uh, so it's virtually the same then uh, submap. Uh, what is the submap? Um, the submaps, as mentioned, can be one per map, like in your basic starter set. Or they may be up to 250 submaps per map. So this is the submap. Remember, submap is a combination of beacons, so which are combined in order to serve some area. What area? Service zone area. Even if uh, you don't defy, define the service zone area specifically or explicitly, like in this case, you click, 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 and say, these beacons or this submap, you will serve uh, this area. Even if you don't define this, there is a uh, implicit uh, limitation of distance, which is 30 meters by default. So, and uh, it means that as soon as 30 meters, unless you increase it further manually, 
the beacons will stop listening to ultrasound. So it means that they will not be able even uh, to um, determine the location of their mobile beacon further than 30 meters. It's possible to set manually to 50 meters, for example. So our recommendation, of course, use up to 30 meters, but you can set 50 meters manual settings. So you can cover very, or you can build manual very large sub map, like 40 meters or 60 meters. Yeah, in some cases it is even possible. It's not recommended, but in some special, when it's very uh, low noise and when you have uh, low frequency ultrasound, like 19, 25 kilohertz, yeah, theoretically it can, in practice as well, uh, can uh, uh, you know cover the distance up to 50 meters. Uh, but in general, it's up to 30 meters. So this is why, for simplicity, we say each sub map is up to 1,000 square meters. So 33 by 33 meters, or some, something like this. Sub maps can be 1D, 2D, 3D, and uh, this is example of 2D. So X, Y. But if you have only one mobile or one station beacons, one station beacon, you can build a 1D uh, sub map. It's also, also possible, for example, when you have a narrow corridor or narrow AL, you don't care about their, you know, Y location, you don't care about Z location or tunnel, for example. You are caring only about, you know, X location or X coordinate. That's it. That's that's a way, a well recommended way to build a 1D sub map. Uh, 2D sub map is the most typical one because you know people usually do either people tricking or uh, robots tricking or forklift or something like this. Uh, so it's 2D, but also 3D. 3D doesn't that doesn't differ from 2D. Simply instead of two beacons, you have four beacons. We will be discussing more about uh, redundancy, but four is recommended because in order to have 3D tracking, you need at least three, but one of those can be easily blocked. So in order to have at least some redundancy, our starter sets consist of five beacons, four station beacons and one mobile beacon. And uh, uh, four station beacons provide you three plus one redundancy for 3D, 3D tracking. This is why we have uh, four station beacons for 3D and the recommendation is for 3D. Now, already mentioned, uh, for 2D, for example, you can build full overlapping submaps and we discuss them a bit deeper. Uh, and uh, normal uh, setup for uh, 3D tracking is 3 plus 1 redundancy. So the system is automatically choosing which of the triangles to choose out of their uh, four different triangles from four beacons and three combinations. So it's automatically choosing. Uh, Non-crossing uh, line in 2D. It's very important. You see, there is a nose. And if you drive the mobile beacon too close to this, then the system cannot distinguish between this and this area. We'll discuss a bit deeper, but uh, main message is don't cross the line connecting two uh, station beacons in 2D. In 3D, there's no such limitation. But in 2D, it's not possible because the system is not able to distinguish simply by geometry whether the mobile beacon is placed in this area or in this area, because it measures the distances and distance will be the same. So don't cross it. In majority of cases, don't even come close because the error will, you know, increase exponentially uh, because there is always some, you know, mistakes if in placement or in calculations, etc. So do not come too close to this line and never cross it. Service, uh, we will discuss about this a bit deeper. But we recommend always have service zones. When you have uh, only a uh, basic sub map consisting of one or two beacons, or, then service zone is recommended, but not a must. But when you have more than one sub maps, like in this case, service zone is virtually a must. Why? Uh, imagine that distance between this beacon and this beacon is uh, just I don't know, five meters and between these beacons oh sorry between this beacon and this beacon is also five meters okay but remember that each of these beacons can listen up to 30 meters or even more and uh, for example you have here uh mobile beacon no, not here for example but in this area this area is certainly better 
to be served by these beacons because they are closer, because they are tuned to this direction, etc. So they are better to be served by this. But from this area to this area, I don't know, maybe 10 meters or 15 meters. So this beacon can easily try to serve the same about beacon. Or well, actually, these two beacons will try to serve uh, in this area. But that's not good because there will be two opinions of location from this map or from this submap about this location and from this submap about the same location. Now, first of all, there are two opinions. Second, it creates additional load. When opinions match, that's great, but there are always mismatching. And the, the system has to choose. But now imagine we are discussing only two um, submaps, but you may have many small submaps. And when the distances are uh, like five meters, uh, on size of the sub map is just five meters, then you may have like five, ten different sub maps overlapping. They will be absolutely mess, and the system will simply not work. So our recommendation is very very basic. As soon as you have more than one sub map, server zone is virtually a must. Notice that uh, sub map is a combination of beacons, but service zone is basically zone or area of responsibility of this sub map. By submap means beacons, two beacons or three beacons or four beacons, depending on how many beacons you have a submap. So submap and server zone is not the same. I hope it's clear. Then heights of the beacons. Remember, uh, for 2D, you must play, uh, you must put the height both station beacons and mobile because submap has, a, you know, all beacons are placed on some height against the floor. The floor is some kind of virtual thing inside the sub map. In practice, it's real floor, and you put the beacons, uh, whatever, three meters, five meters, or ten meters above the floor. Uh, in some cases, it's a virtual thing, but nevertheless. So you must uh, put enter manually, you know, because the system is not able to uh, uh, calculate the height. The system is able to measure the distance between the beacons and build the table of distance automatically, but not the height. There's nothing to measure against because there's no knowledge about their, the floor. So the height of the beacons, station beacons, must be placed, uh, put manually. And for 2D, also the height of their mobile beacon, because it's 2D. The system must know what's the height. So if your station beacons are on 3 meters, then your forklifts on 2.2 meters, you must enter the height of their uh, mobile beacon. For 3D, it's not the case. For 3D, only a height of station beacons is a must. And for mobile beacon, of course, in 3D, Z is also measured. Uh, Self-building. That's a great advantage of super beacons because you just place them physically inside your uh, whatever warehouse or area. Like you put one beacon, another beacon, and you build submap. So the submap is self-built. Because until you freeze the submap, until you've done this, the system is trying to uh, measure the distances between the beacons. From beacon 1 to beacon 2, or in this case, from beacon 10 to beacon 11, and from beacon 11 to beacon 10. And the uh, system is uh, basically populating the table consisting of 10 to 11, 11 to 10, and when the distance is much, for example, 5 meters, 0, 1 centimeter, and 5 meters, 0, 3 centimeters, okay, system says, okay, just 2 centimeters difference. So uh, it assumes that measurement was done correctly, shows that the table of distance is wide. So that's okay. You can freeze the map. Map is ready, or submap is ready. Uh, for what? For building another submap, for example, this one. Uh, so once again, as soon as you are fine with placement of the beacons, uh, you are fine with the table of distances, you are fine with the service zone, uh, you can freeze the map. Oh, sorry, freeze the sub map. If your map consists of only uh, one sub map, then you can freeze the map as well. If not, then you build another sub map, another sub map, another sub map, another sub map, and when all the sub maps are built, frozen, then you can freeze the map. Because the map is basically a combination of submaps. These are the table of distances what I referred to. Um, for with super beacons or industrial super beacons or any kind of super beacons which are able to emit ultrasound and transmit ultrasound, the table of distances can be built automatically. 
So you don't need to enter a location of the beacons manual. You don't have to measure the distance between the beacons manual. Even more, if it's only possible, we strongly recommend uh, to uh, let the system to build the system uh, the, to build a uh, table of distance automatically. Why? Um, we discussed this in uh, separate topics because there are like real meters, there are ultrasound meters, etc. So before calibration, it's not the same. So make sure that the table of distances is white uh, when you freeze it. So in this case, it's not white, it's green because it was populated manually. But in normal conditions, it would be white. So like 30 meters, uh, 1 to 129 millimeters and 30 meters, uh, whatever, 120 millimeters. OK, 9 millimeters difference between from this direction to this direction. That's OK. It would be shown white if you have any cells in the table of distance red system clearly say okay my distances from beacon and to the beacon um, do not match there's something wrong what wrong okay there could be no line of sight there could be some suboptimal position there could be line of sight but they are not turned uh, correctly to each other etc so system is basically saying table of distances is not ready don't move forward don't freeze the submap, don't do anything unless you fix. Because again, everything can step and there is a separate video about this. So until you have perfectly white table of distances, don't move forward, forward. Don't try to track, there will be poor tracking and uh, jumps and all, everything. Table of distance must be white and then you freeze it. Server zones, we already discussed, so I will probably do it relatively quicker. So, uh, we recommend to have server zone uh, even in the single submap. Why? Because if you don't build a server zone in a single submap and you place, for example, beacons, I don't know, two meters from each other, that's okay, or two or four meters, whatever, uh, you will think, okay, I will have a small map, so I will have a high update rate. No, you will not have a high update rate because Effectively, if you don't build a service zone, defining whatever three by three meters or five by five meters, what is your expected submap is, the system doesn't know that. And the system will build 30 meters submap. It's not shown, but it's 30 meters submap. If there is a submap at 30 meters, so ultrasound will propagate 30 meters before the next update rate. So instead of having a very small three or four meter submap, you'll have 30 meters submap. So define the server zone even for the single submap. For multiple submaps, for more than one, it's nearly a must. We already discussed. So if you don't define this, then there will be multiple opinions about the location of um, about beacon from neighboring submaps, and it will be a mess. When you have two, three, it works. But uh, it may work. Again, it may work. We not, do not recommend. It may work, uh, but most likely the tracking will be poor because there will be different opinions, etc. Uh, but if you have, for example, a relatively small area and many submaps, there will be complete mess. So always build service zones when you have more than uh, one uh, submap. Service zones can be 1D, like map, 2D, and 3D. Okay, in 1D is basically limitation of distance, so it's your service zone. So a limitation of distance is basically saying to, to, to the beacon, do not listen more than the set value, for example, 10 meters. So in this case, limitation of distance. After 10 meters of time of flight, the system will simply not listen to. And if the beacon is, um, let's say, mobile beacon is 11 meters, it will basically go, 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 9, it, it's still tracked, 9.5, still tracked, 10, still tracked, 10.5, that's it. It's already not seen. It, it's outside. It's just, you know, went outside, not, not visible. So be careful with this, because if you set too little, then your mobile beacon is outside and it's not tracked. It's simply not there. So this is why we always recommend, you know, if you're stuck, press default, kill the map, rebuild the map from scratch. And with default settings of 30 meters, most likely your mobile beacon will be inside this. So th this is also, of course, try to make as uh, small submap as possible, server zone as possible. But if you stuck or lost your mobile beacon, you know, delete your map, save it first for the future, 
but delete it and rebuild from the scratch with 30 meters service uh, zones implicit or limitation of distance implicit service zones. For 3D, uh, submap is, very, is, is uh, like a layer. So you define the 2D submap and the height above the floor and below the floor. So it, it's like a layer. So it, it, it has the shape of 2D uh, submap and a height, just height above and height below. So that's a 3D submap. Now, service zones and limitation of distance are very, very similar. So if you don't define the service zone, there will be limitation of distance. Uh, but uh, if you define the service zone, the service zone prevails and there will be no limitation distance anymore. But otherwise, uh, for example, uh, what would be limitation of distance of listening to ultrasound for this uh, beacon? It will be the maximum size of the submap plus some additional margin for safety. Already mentioned, uh, service zones are important for many reasons. Now, first of all, it's handover zones and this, you know, avoiding minority reports and my, my multiple opinions. But another element is location update rate. Of course, typically, you want to have as large update rate as possible. But the update rate depends on time of flight of ultrasound. But time of flight of ultrasound depends on the size of, this, of the map. It depends also on some other parameters. I mean, the update rate, like radio profile, etc. But the uh, largest contribution is from their uh, size of the submap. So this is why the smaller submap you have, the higher update rate you will have. So this is why if update rate is important for you, try to reduce the size of the submap by defining the service zone. Um, service zone today, uh, you know, it can be click, like click, 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 like click, 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 uh, up to eight uh, points. So if uh, for, for whatever reasons you would need more, you know, let us know, maybe we will increase it. But today, server zone uh, may have eight points or whatever, eight corners. Handover zone is very, very simple. Handover zone is a zone over, of overlapping of two submaps. In this uh, zone, or let's say in this area, only first submap is serving. In this area, only second submap is serving. But in this area, two uh, neighboring submaps are serving. And this is why there are soft handovers and hard handovers. So soft handovers are, of course, better, because in this area, both are serving. So, and when it's center, and there is a uh, uh several types of handovers handover of first type second type and third type first type is when it enters uh the handover zone it already can be tracked by former submap and future submap so first handover first type of handover is when it's immediately jump to their uh to the new um uh, to, to the new beacon, to, to the new, sorry, uh, submap. Second is it goes, goes, goes. It's already served, it's been served by both submaps, but it still uh, uh, reports as location from their former submap, from the old submap, until it reaches the end of its serving zone. And then here it immediately jumps to their. Uh, coordinates reported by the second submap. Of course, the whole network planning and the whole uh, you know placement is done in order to avoid any jumps. And typically, jump is not visible. But if the submap is not built perfectly or misaligned or something, there will be a small jump, or not small, depending on how bad their error is, uh, when it enters the uh, service zone or handover zone and when it leaves. So it depends. And the um, uh, handover zone uh, and uh, handover type three is uh, averaging. So when it's close, it's mostly on their uh, on this submap, and then in the middle it will be 50-50, and at the end it's mostly uh, this submap, and when it uh, exits, it's of course on this submap. So it helps to make uh, these potential jumps uh, smoother. But when you build it. Sometimes it's easy and nicer uh, to have uh, 
to have a knowledge of this jump. Heart handover is uh, when their beacon, the mobile beacon, is entering the service zone, but for some reason it's not handed over to the second submap, and the system must initiate, you know, heart handover procedure. And the heart handover procedure is uh, uh, basically trying to find the mobile beacon from the scratch. With soft handover, there is no delay. It just goes, 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 and uh, goes through like, like this. So it will go like this. So this will be the soft handover. In the hard handover, it will go here. It will be lost for whatever reason. And then it will be lost for some location updates, maybe two, three, five, even 10 location updates. So if you have eight times per second, so it may be lost for one, two seconds before it will be found already here. And then it will go good, uh, like normal tricking in this. Hard handover is, of course, must be avoided, <clears throat> but hard handover is better than completely being completely lost. So hard handover is uh, functionality, uh, but this functionality uh, is a kind of last resort when uh, the beacons are lost. How to place the beacons? Before we go to how to build submaps and multiple submaps, Let's briefly touch how to build, uh, how to place the beacons. And there's only one uh, rule governing everything is line of sight, line of sight, line of sight. Uh, how to place the beacons? The beacons must be placed so that uh, there will be least probability of non line of sight from the mobile beacon to the station beacons. So this is why typically not always, but in 95% of cases, you place the station beacons, you know, high on the ceiling or high on the uh, floor, and the mobile beacon is placed on the top of vehicle, robot, or drone. So this is why in our helmet, the sensor is on, on the top, because there will be least probability of obstruction. Of course, people can hide under the desk, table, or behind their, I don't know, uh, forklift. Uh, but those chances are smaller than if, for example, you put your mobile beacon on your chest or in your pocket. It's almost always guaranteed that it will, will be most of the time non line of sight. So this is why station beacons on the top, mobile beacons is also on the top, station beacons is looking downwards, mobile beacon is looking upwards. Looking means this. Because remember, and check the operating manual, uh, each of these transducers emit ultrasound in roughly 90 degrees beam. So this is why four, 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 you have 360 degrees horizontal coverage. And vertically, there's 180 degrees coverage. The microphone, which is slightly offset, has automatically 360 degrees horizontally and almost 180 degrees. It's difficult to say because, you know, to the horizon, it still listens, but with a uh, weaker signal. So the sensitivity drops to the horizon. So this is why we are discussing that your mobile beacons, oh, sorry, your station beacons must be typically more than 20, 30 degrees above the horizon. If uh, your uh, uh, station beacons is very far, for example, here, and it's almost to the horizon, then the sensitivity may drop and all nasty things may start happening. It's no subject for this particular presentation, uh, but remember, place the station beacons high enough, so it means that it will be not next to the horizon. But for example, if you play, put it below the horizon for the mobile beacons, for example, like, like, like this and below, this microphone will be simply not able to even hear, because it will not see it. it it's below, you know, it, it will create the shadow, so it will be in the shadow. For example, here it's a shadow for this microphone. So this is not a shadow, but this would be the shadow. Clear. Uh, so basically line of sight, line of sight, line of sight. And you place a beacon so that you would cover the same area with the least number of beacons and the least chance of the abstraction. And typically least chance of the abstraction and the least number of beacons, place them you know, high on the wall, not too high, not too low, more than 20 degrees to the horizon to the mobile from the mobile beacon 
and uh, with the least chance of the abstraction. And remember as well, uh, if possible, place the beacon so that you can build the smallest submap and the smallest server zone, so you will have a highest update rate. Other hints, already mentioned, remember to put the height uh, to the station beacons. Those are typical mistakes, avoid them. Uh, for mobile build, for mobile beacons for 2G and 1G, also the height is a must. Otherwise, it will be, you know, not measured. Location will be even measured, but it will be offset, so you don't need that error. Um, you see, sometimes when you install the beacon in the corner, you don't want or you don't need the sensor emitting upward. For example, what's the point? There's no nothing to uh, to be served, so disable the transducer facing upward if it's not needed there or another transducer is basically facing to the uh, to the wall neighboring you don't need it typically it doesn't hurt but it you know additional power additional something but sometimes sometimes it hurts because it emits there could be some special standing waves or something and if it's too close then it may distract the pulse the ultrasound pulse because for example imagine for the large distance you have we typically recommend uh, enable 50 pulses what does it mean 50 pulses each pulse and for our let's say typical 31 kilohertz frequency each pulse is around one centimeter so the length of the pulse is 50 centimeters if your wall is like 10 centimeters and you emit to the wall and your pulse is started running of course the reflected signal will come later, but the reflected signal may go in uh, 180 degrees phase, which means that it will try to kill our, uh, our uh, main wave. Of course, the first part, it will not be able because it's already delayed. It goes this way and this way, but the last part, it may effectively kill. So instead of 50 good pulses, you'll have only 10 or 15 good pulses and the rest will be probably killed by your too close reflection how to combat easily don't place too close to the walls close means closer than let's say 30 centimeters uh, don't place or don't enable the uh, the transducers emitting to the wall there's no point it will not help you but it may uh, harm you um, so and then rotate the beacons for example we recommend okay install on the wall but in reality don't install on the wall install on the wall and slightly rotate to the center it, it's better because you know you want the best coverage the best coverage means like this remember that each of their uh, transducer gives you around uh, 90 degrees so sometimes you need only one transducer like this one only five for example you have a corner corner is 90 degrees so if you if you enable in the corner right in the middle so you disable all the transducers and all the transducers from this and only transducer number four which is the center one which is pointing to the center of your uh service zone and from this it's perfect it's perfect for several directions now first of all there will be no this additional uh cancellation because you install in the corner second remember our system is very precise, so people typically want to achieve even highest, highest precision. And the highest, highest precision is achieved when you have a single emitting transducer, not five. Five are great, you know, to provide the coverage, but they are slightly offset from each other, like one, two centimeters, and it contributes. It's very difficult to say, but it's not a dot anymore. So it's kind of a thick dot, and it brings some uncertainty. Difficult again to prove it mathematically, but uh, if you have only single uh, transducer, single emitter, it certainly helps because it's much more smaller dot, so you have higher accuracy. It also helps, and it helps also because of power. Instead of driving five transducers, you will drive only one transducer. You know, it significantly saves on power, and sometimes even the range because you know the same power embedded or you know put into five different transducers and one transducer it helps typically doesn't much because transducers are anyway saturated by their power 
but sometimes it helps to remember. Uh, the modem can be placed anywhere as soon as it provides the coverage to each of their station and mobile beacon. So we do not discuss much the modems. There is a separate uh, study radio uh, presentation about this. Um, so when we are referring to frequencies or when we are referring to anything, the modem can be anywhere. It may have non line of sight. It doesn't matter. But of course, it must have radio connectivity to each of their beacon, mobile and stationary. Particularly difficult are mobile because for station you can guarantee, nearly guarantee, uh, you know, because you test it. You have a RSSI. The mobile beacons are moving, antenna conditions are different, all the conditions are different. So for mobile beacon, it, beacons, it's more difficult. And uh, even more, why uh, these uh, future super maps are available? For example, you have a high uh, building with several floors. It's very, very difficult with one modem to cover several floors. It's possible, but some special antennas needs to be arranged in order to provide because radio signal, they have a very weak, up to 10 dBm radio. It's very difficult to provide the coverage of radio through the floors. And hint number two. Uh, there's a special video about this already, so check those videos. I will not touch too much, but uh, in some cases, Okay, I will not go. Some special cases when the beacons are too wide and too close. For example, this would be already, this is a different subject, but this would be too wide uh, map because the mobile beacon is too close to the line of this. And when it's uh, too narrow, when the mobile beacon is too far. For example, if, if these two would uh, build a map and, uh, and the mobile beacon is here, it's too wide. Two byte means when the ratio is, I don't know, one to 10. Uh, typical ratio, recommended ratio is, you know, one to one, one to one third, one to three, something like this. That's good. Well, but one to 10 uh, or 10 to one is, is already too much. Uh, precise Z. There is a special configuration about the precise Z. Check videos as well. I will not touch it, but pay attention. It's about starting, um, starting copter from the floor. If you place the beacons on the floor, there will be difficulty with Z before it flies away. Check it more carefully there. Uh, so this is why, if, for example, uh, there, the drone must not fly away, but flies inside their building the easiest way to achieve the precise Z is basically place their station beacons on the ceiling and never fly above the ceiling. Then you basically don't have any issues with precise Z at all. Um, about their 2D and not crossing. I already touched it, but let's look at this. Why the problem is with uh, not crossing. So this is a typical 2D uh, sub map. It doesn't matter. Inverse architecture, non-inverse architecture, does matter the same, the same way. So this is the real location, and you see this is a nose showing that we are serving in this area. But if you come closer, 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 and even cross, then the system is not able to distinguish. You may be here, but the system will still believe that you are here. So, for example, if you move like this, so in practice, the system will show a mirror because the system will not be able to distinguish it will be still able to listen to this area but it will not be able to distinguish whether you are here or here basically be because of basic geometry based on two station because it's impossible geometrically um, but our recommendation not even come too close to this why no already mentioned too wide too narrow as soon as you come too close how the system works it's triliteration or in this case biliteration it measures the distance and the distance from this area and this area is almost the same so the system may start confusing and if you did not, didn't uh, calculate or measure this very very precisely for example you made whatever two centimeters error so when you are too close this will look like you're already in this line so you'll have all kind of nasty things. 
and particularly it's problematic when you have a high for example you place 2d so the, this beacon and this beacon are this and you know over there so th these are two these beacons and uh, they are placed uh, whatever three five meters above the ground and when you come too close to this and try to track it will be again this too wide and too narrow error and effectively you'll be very 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 close to this line uh because in relative terms you need to measure uh long distances but you are very close to this line and there will be a high chance of the error which will manifest itself then it will go 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 and then boom, suddenly it will jump for example on this because it will be long you know system will believe impossible it's possible you are still not crossing the line but because of margin because of errors it may put you on this rule is very simple do not come too close to uh to the line connecting two beacons how much you know there is no clear cut rule it depends how well you build the map but overall not closer than one tenth of the distances between their station beacons again it's not the real rule it's uh, just you know hint and advice let's stop uh with this first part because it looks like the presentation will be even longer so uh check the second part and probably the third one thank you very much